Jiggity Jiggity Jace. Christy Chris. We're back inside the lab on Tuesday, which on Tuesday. a lot of people at home already know what that means. It's Tor Pro Tuesday. It is Tor Pro Tuesday, and I know a lot of you at home are probably sitting on the edge of your seat for some Austin Eckroat analysis, but you are not going to get that today. In not fact, today. we came up with something that's going to be a whole lot better. Way better. Way better. And I'm going to ask you a question before we get things started here. First off, did you have a good weekend? I had a good weekend. Did you have a good weekend? My weekend was very busy. Very, very busy. busy. You get to release your first video this week. I got to release weekend. my first video, Chris. Congratulations on that. Well Thank done, you, sir. Thank you, Chris. I know you've got some big stuff coming for the folks at home. Coming up. I got a big one coming for you guys later on in the week too, which I'm very excited about. And it's going to help you solve one very common problem that we see with most of you people that come to visit us on the website. That's right. Now, here's the other question I had for you. What do Tiger Woods, Adam Scott, Rory McIlroy, John Rahm, Scotty Scheffler all have in common? You know, besides being world number ones, they have nothing in common, Chris. Absolutely nothing in common. But they were all number ones in the world. They were. Time. Or are. And one is still number one. But the reason why they're all very different and they don't have a whole lot in common when it comes to swinging the golf club is because they have a golf swing that's built for their DNA, not your DNA. But they all have one common attribute in their swing shape that we're gonna be focusing in on today that you guys at home do the exact opposite. And we see it way too often. And it causes a magnitude of problems in the downswing. That makes it harder for you to be able to transfer speed the right way. It makes it harder for you to be able to maintain consistency. And I know every single person watching this video will probably safely say, they, they want to become a more consistent version of themselves. I want to become a more consistent version of myself. I do too. You can't be consistent unless you can do this exact move that we're talking about. I promise you. Before you go anywhere, do us a big favor. If you are brand new to the channel, head down below, subscribe to the channel, and if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to post that up below, and always do us a big favor and hit that thumbs up button. So today, we're talking about club head speed and the ability to be able to transfer it the proper way through the hitting area. And a lot of you at home struggle in the game of golf because of two major factors putting club head speed in the wrong spot and trusting the fact that you're going to have enough space for your hands and your arms and the golf club to pass in front of your body. Because what we're going to be focusing in on here today is the common movement that you're going to see with every single player that swings a golf club at the highest level that a lot of you at home struggle with. And that is your head movement. That's right. But before we do that, I want to talk a little bit about the club head speed factor because you've seen me use this analogy before and I want this to really kind of keep the wheels turning in your brain as we go further into the journey this week. And if you look at the screen really closely, you can see that from about the belt line down to the ground, we have our green section. This is our speed zone. This is where we want the golf club starting to move its fastest. And what we want is our golf club moving at peak speed just prior to the point of contact. This middle section is what we call our acceleration zone. This is where we want the hands and arms starting to get picked up in the pace department by accelerating them down into the speed zone. And this red section up here is what we call our slow zone. This is where we stop the backswing and we start changing the direction into the downswing. This is not where we want things moving their slowest, but this is where all of the slower movements from the hands and arms start to happen, and even in the club head. But a lot of you will start to put club head speed up in the slow zone, or even in the acceleration zone. And once you start that process, you're not gonna stop. And what that generally leads to is that leads to a very big steepening move in your swing shape that you're gonna find that you need to shallow back out. And a great way for a lot of you to shallow that back out is to stand up with your head and your chest. Now, you're never going to find that with the best players in the world. You're always going to see one very common factor across the board with every single player. And that's at impact, their head is significantly lower than where it was at address. Watch Adam here on the left-hand side of the screen. You're going to notice that he makes a pressure shift into his trail side and he starts to turn his body. He's creating a good load sequence here to get things moving. He's getting the body to help load up, to help move the hands and arms fast. But notice that the, hand, the head starts to drop down just a little bit. Now in transition, it's gonna drop down even more. We've now transferred pressure from the trail side of our body over to the lead side of the body, somewhere up in the neck of the woods of about 80 to 90%. Now this is where the fun starts to happen. This is where we're gonna start really capitalizing on the leverage factors in the golf swing. And it's from the ground and through lag and release. What we're gonna be doing at this point when we start to transfer the weight onto the lead foot is we're gonna to start to push down into the ground. And that pushing down in the ground and rotating the hip from your midsection is gonna to start to move that lead hip up and away. And you can measure that by looking at the lead pocket. But when you watch that, that post-up movement that you hear us talk so much about, that vertical post-up, what do you see from his head and his chest? It's certainly not moving upright. We're staying in the shot. Now, a lot of you at home get scared to feel this sort of movement happen because you have one very, very big angle down in front of your body here between 
the club shaft and your forearms. And it doesn't feel like there's gonna be enough space for you to be able to fit the club head through the hitting area without stuffing it into the ground. So a lot of you will make your post-up movement a vertical natured movement from the head and chest instead of trusting the factor that there's going to be other shallowing moves that take place. The golf swing is full of steepening and shallowing moves. And one of the big shallowing moves that we have in the golf swing is what we call our secondary tilt. When you look at it from an address position, this is what we call our primary tilt. This is just the spine leaning away from the target. Now when we make our golf swing and we start to shift onto our lead side and we begin to make the post-up movement happen, this post-up movement is helping slow the body down, but it's also helping us increase the tilt to our spine. Looking at impact, if I draw a line from the sternum down to the belt buckle, you can see that his tilt has increased a significant amount. That tilt is what's helping shallow the swing plane. That coupled back with the release is what's giving him enough space for the club to go passing in front. Any vertical natured movement from the head and chest is gonna create plane shift. It's gonna create little issues with the way the club wants to rotate. Those things are what contribute to the factor that you can become inconsistent. So it's important that you keep the head and the chest down and you trust the fact that you can release the club properly and learn how to release it properly, just like you would see of a guy like Tiger Woods. Now Tiger, I think it's pretty safe to say that he's probably got some of the best leg and hip action that we've ever seen in the game of golf. And I love to study his leg and hip action because of how powerful he is and how much of ground force he really likes to use in the swing shape. Same thing here, we're gonna mark his head position and we're gonna see a very comparable movement that as he turns into his right leg, the head starts to drop down as the lead arm gets to parallel to the ground. And here we are at the top of the swing where we're gonna really start to unload and move left. Now notice the head and the chest really dropping down here and notice the belt buckle dropping down with it. We've now got that same pressure shift onto the lead side. And I want you to watch the belt buckle exclusively and watch the belt buckle move vertically and start to rotate back up and away. But look back up at the head. The head is still staying down. There's an increase in tilt. And this is what I'm gonna be teaching you later in the week, is I'm gonna be teaching you how to free up the space so that you can take in lag and you can learn how to release it because this is where all of the speed starts to come out of the golf swing. But you don't want a golf swing that's just full of speed. You want a golf swing that's full of speed and control. Now, the final two guys that I wanna look at are very contrasting golf swings. We have John Rahm on the left-hand side of the screen and Scotty Scheffler on the right. We're gonna look at John first, and I think it's probably pretty safe to say that he's got one of the shorter swings in the business. And you're gonna see that something that he has to do with his head in the downward half is a little bit different than of Tiger or of Adam. But you're still gonna notice that the head drops down. So here we are loading into the right side. We start shifting left. Now, what do you notice about John's head before the post-up starts to happen or as the post-up starts to happen? Notice how the head starts to move back away from the target a little bit more. That's increasing his tilt, which is helping him shallow things out because you can see that John's got a ton of shaft lean. Why? Well, because he's a bowed left wrister. These are all things that are tied specifically to their DNA. That's why I would never advocate that you go out there and try to swing like one of your best or most favorite playing professionals that you have because you have to remember that there's so many variables and so many components that go into that. That's what we help you do at My Golf DNA is we help you understand what your DNA is and how you should be building some of these movements into your swing shape and which ones to stay away from. But we would always advocate a drop of the head and making sure that you stay down in the shot when you make your post up and your release. And that's exactly what John does so well. Now Scotty's got probably the more in vogue sort of movement when it comes to golf instruction right now. He's a player that is not moving a lot of horizontal natured movement into his swing shape. In fact, there's a lot of people out there that tell you that he's trying to stay onto his left side, but you can still see that he moves into his trail side and his head is actually gonna drop down a little bit sooner than the other players. But when you look at him at the top of the golf swing, he's still lowered his head a significant amount. And you're gonna see that as he starts to move left, there's not gonna be as much downward pressure because he's already increased it more. And he doesn't have a long ways to travel to get onto his lead side. So from here, this is where the head is gonna to start to tilt back because he needs that to help shallow the swing shape out. This again is very much tied to his DNA. You're not gonna see a vertical natured movement from the head and the chest from any player you will always see them staying down and posting up and releasing the club the proper way. This is how we transfer speed at the right time, and this is how we bring consistency to that speed, which is exactly what you're gonna learn later on in the week. Remember, do us a big favor, post up any questions or comments you might have. Also, leave us some likes if you like today's video, and do us a big favor. If you want us to analyze anybody's golf swings out there, please leave that in the comments below, and we'll do our best. We'll see you guys in the next video.